Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, or if this is your first time here, welcome indeed to our Path of Exile Sentinel Beginner's Guide walkthrough playthrough where we will show you everything that you need to know about the game. So obviously when you start right out, you want to create a brand new character. Uh, just as a heads up, Path of Exile is a very complex game, so I really recommend you guys to follow this by putting this on a, maybe a second monitor, throwing this on your phone, and you guys can kind of play along because there's so much to learn with Path of Exile. So let's go ahead and get started. What you definitely want to click is on Sentinel. This is the new league. This is where the new content will actually happen. So let's get started. So now we're gonna be able to select our character class. Now, keep in mind, just because the way that the character looks like, oh, I wanna play a bow character, that does not lock you to selecting the ranger. You can do a lot of different things in PoE, but for the sake of the playthrough, I really, really will recommend you guys to play the witch, because um, that's what we're gonna be playing through. But feel free if you want to, to go ahead and play whatever that you wanna play as. I'm gonna show you guys the entire campaign. So. Let's go and get started. So that's League Sentinel. Uh, and let's go. And also, just as a heads up, if you guys want to, I do happen to have video guides that will help you out. If you've never played Path of Exile, this video is definitely going to be showing you guys everything. But there are a few things that I want to go ahead and mention really quick. So in terms of like this build that we're going to be playing, it could do everything in the game. We could do the Feared, we can do Uber Elder, we can do some of the hardest things that the game has to offer. In addition to that, I do want to mention that the playstyle of this uh, gameplay is going to be a summoner slash spellcaster build. So it kind of is a hybrid for a while where we are going to be using this skill called Absolution. But later on, we can kind of define our character a little bit more and kind of decide what we want to go. So this can clear out everything. I already have the full build guide for those of you guys that are like more familiar with Path of Exile. However, um, if you guys want like a beginner's guide to get some of the external tools that I will be using, like little loot filters and the other little sounds to make the game a little bit more fun, feel free to check out that video. They'll be all in the pinned comments. But let's go ahead and hop right into the gameplay. Like I said, throw this on another monitor and we can play side by side. So in the very beginning, we're going to pick up an item so we can actually use our attack. We we'll skip all the tutorials. I'll explain them. So we left click to attack and we can left click to move. But I'm going to change my left click. If I want to, I can change it to move only so that way it doesn't attack. Now I can click on any of these uh, over here where I have mine set up for QWER. You can change all of your key binds to whatever you want. But the first item that we're gonna get is a fireball. We're gonna left click on that and put it inside of this blue hole. So how it works in Path of Exile is our skills are basically gems. And I'll also go over really quickly the options panel because I might have my key binds set to something different. Uh, feel free to go ahead and change yours. I'm just gonna go ahead and scroll through this real quick. I know my face is kind of blocking it, so I'll move out of the way. Just in case any of you guys wanna see the settings that I'm using, like for example, I don't really like it when the screen shakes for like the game, for like the um, UI. These are all the settings that I have. There's one thing that I highly recommend you guys to do. Do you see where that it says landscape transparency? This lets you kind of see some of like the rocks and stuff, but it's basically irrelevant for the most part. It just kind of shows the map more clear. So I really recommend this. I also recommend moving the map zoom all the way uh, out. So basically it's zoomed out as much as possible. But these are the settings that I'm using uh, just in case anyone does want them. You can change like your cursor and little things like that in terms of like the uh, controls and stuff like that. These are what I have mine bound to but they are definitely gonna be different for the default. But that's all it really comes down to as far as like showing you guys a little bit of extra stuff, just so it makes more sense if I say like I'm pressing this button for this, we might have different keybinds. But I'm gonna uh, set my fireball uh, to E or W is what I usually like to use for my actual skills, but I like to have move on a key. Um, you could set your left click for move to, for move only. It's actually a really nice feature as well. So the first skill that we have is fireball. And over here on the left is our HP, and the other one is our mana. I'm sure you guys know how to play video games. When you lose out all your HP, that means you die. Make sure you click on a large chest. For any class, you're gonna get a support gem. So this is actually pretty important. This gem over here can be linked with the fireball. So it's gonna have arcane surge. It will cost more mana most of the time for these support skills, but it's gonna grant us extra damage as well as mana regen. Now we have this buff when we cast and meet the requirements for arcane surge. But later we'll be going to be able to select kind of uh, how we want to play the game. For the most part, this build is a summoner caster. And you can actually go for a lot of different skills in the very beginning. But later down the line, you're going to basically hone in on one skill. Like basically you can either do Skelly Mages or Absolution for this build. And it'll be basically the same tree. But if you guys want like the full tree and everything like that, uh, it'll be linked down below. But 
play along because Path of Exile has so much to learn. Um, and the thing is, is that uh, it's not beginner friendly at all. Like the game doesn't really teach you how to play the game properly uh, because there's just literally so much content. Now pick up all the items in the very beginning and we're gonna actually sell it for some uh, currency. So unlike in a lot of other action RPGs where there's like gold or silver um, in this game, the stuff that modifies your items is actually going to be the uh, form of currency. So like right here, we have the Scroll of Wisdom. I can identify these and these may sell for more. I'm gonna actually equip that, but um, you can see because it just grants us extra spell damage. I'm going to identify these boots specifically because we could maybe get like movement speed on them. So we're gonna sell all the rest of the items. And just so we can get transmutation shards, uh, once we get 20, it will become an orbit transmutation, which we will use to purchase other items later down the line. You can see we basically can't really get anything at the moment. Um, if we can see a three link like this over here, mana on kill, and oh, this was actually quite nice. It grants us plus one uh, to level of all fire spell gems. So I'm gonna equip that, put this in here, and make sure that they're linked. Otherwise, we won't get the arcane surge bonus. So now we're just gonna go sell this. It'll only sell for a scroll fragment, which is for a scroll of wisdom. Goodbye. Next, we can uh, we'll go over here, and we can also grab a, another skill. So normally, you can get Freezing Pulse if you want to. You can get Ray Zombie. <clears throat> Those are the two like ones that I would recommend. <clears throat> Since I have plus one to uh, the level of the uh, Fire uh, Spell Gems, I'm going to keep this one. And Zombie doesn't need to be linked to anything right now, because it's not going to really get any bonus. Now, I know this is going to be a little bit overwhelming, but... I'll show you guys everything because Path of Exile is one of the best games ever. Like this is one of my favorite games and it can be overwhelming when you see the skill tree. Now, don't worry. And no, it seems like it's insane, but that makes me excited. This is where some people go and think, wow, dude, this is a little bit too crazy. Don't worry, I'll walk you through everything. So we're actually gonna be starting the path over here to the left. So we're gonna get the increased spell damage and extra mana. And we're just gonna continue on. And don't feel like you have to kill every single enemy. It's not required at all. Just, if there's like a large enough pack, you can stop. And oh, actually, since we have the zombies, you can get Freezing Pulse or zombies. Freezing Pulse will like basically go through multiple targets, but I'm gonna play this playthrough um, and play with whatever I'm getting. And feel free to do that as well. Like if you get plus to like lightning skill gems in the early on, hey, feel free to go ahead and use like a lightning skill. But later on line, it won't really matter. Okay, this is actually completely new. So this is the new mechanic for Sentinel League. This is actually new to me, so I actually don't know everything with this um, system. So I guess we have to equip this Sentinel. Oh, we, so we right click on this and we have a, like a completely new like tree here. And I guess we put this item in here. This is again new to me as well. So we put this in here and uh, we can d deploy the Sentinel. Now this is something I'm going to re-key bind. So if I go to my uh, input over here, I'm going to set, where is it, you stalker sentinel, okay, so this I'm going to completely change up the setup for this, uh, I think I'll do like, uh, ooh, what should I do for this, um, let's do like J, uh, JK, and then L, okay, so that way I can use that, so let's see what this does, so this is supposed to make the enemies harder, and in return we get better loot, now a lot of the league mechanics earlier on, they can be quite nasty to run into, but we'll try to do it. So what we're gonna do now is over on the right side, you'll see that we can upgrade our gems. I'm just gonna click on upgrade them all. Pretty much you wanna upgrade all of your gems with some exceptions, and I'll, I'll explain that later down the line. The reason why you wouldn't wanna upgrade a gem though is because it would cost too much mana, or it might have some thresholds on requirements, which again, we'll get more into later, but for the most part right now, just upgrade everything that you can. And I'll teach you guys everything with Path of Exile. There's like the trading system, which is pretty complex. Um, I'll teach you guys how to play the game very, very efficiently. But right now we're just gonna move. Uh, Freezing Pulse is a pretty good skill too. So like I said, if you want to get that, but I like getting zombies earlier on just so we can start leveling them up. And if you get items, I think they should automatically equip uh, on our character. We can actually remove the armor if we want to for extra move speed. Because early on, um, it's, it's a weird hidden stat in the game where your uh, move speed is actually determined by your armor sometimes. Some, some armors will give you negative move speed. It doesn't actually show it in the actual like item if you like, go over it, but it does. I'm going to check out the FPS. Okay, so we're at like 150-ish right now. Sometimes, just as a heads up, the servers get super stressed day one. So... That can be a thing, and if you are lagging a little bit, 
day one there's so many people that are playing the game, it can't happen. So don't worry too much about it if you're like, what, this game's a little laggy. Again, day one, it happens, man. Because I'm on an RTX 3090, so the game should be, like, perfectly smooth. But, again, day one. Okay, so what we're coming up to is a waypoint. If you've ever played Diablo, it's a very uh, similar system. So you can see we can go over here to uh, the mud flats, but we're actually going to go down over here, and we are going to uh, be to get a, a quest. We're going to get a quest completed over here. I'm not going to be like listening to any of the dialogue, but feel free if you want to listen to the dialogue in the game. There's a lot of really cool lore and stuff like that, but I'm really here just to show you the game, so I'm skipping out most of it. We'll get the armor scrap. That can actually improve the quality of your armor. Later, we will actually equip armor. This is not like a no armor playthrough. It's just in the very beginning, you get minus 3% movement speed, and uh, for me, I'd rather have the movement speed, but keep the armor on uh, if you'd like to. So we're going to be in the title island. We're going to be looking for a medicine chest box. Uh, we just keep moving. And click on any of the um, things that you see that are like barrels, chests. Click on all of those. Because it's a free way to get loot without even requiring to kill anything. Which is really nice. But yeah, I'll try to show you guys a lot of the skills too. Because I, I might not want to use a skill that you might want to like. And that's totally cool. But later on the line, you will have to play with, uh, like, some sort of summoner, like, summon mechanic, because that's what we're scaling our damage into. The first few levels don't really matter, other than, like, the very first one, because we have some damage, but we'll, we'll put our points into it in a moment. Just, because the game doesn't pause itself when you're in combat. Alright, now this is something important that we're about to pick up. And keep in mind, th the same items may not drop, your map might look a little different in all the areas. The game isn't always going to be exactly the same because it uses random maps. Uh, so now that we've grabbed the item, which is the green item over here, and yours may not have a sound it's because I have a special loot filter, but uh, again, in the pin comment if you guys want these special sounds and effects. Um, but now, instead of using the portal to go back to town, we're actually going to go ahead and go to character selection screen. So I hit escape, go to character selection screen. So in the very beginning, we will be doing this to save portal scrolls because they're just not super common in the very beginning. Now we want to pick up the Quicksilver Flask because otherwise you're going to be going pretty slow. So now we get to get a new uh, gem for support. We're going to actually grab the Summon Phantasm support and we're going to get that gem. And then we're going to sell everything that we're not re like really going to be using. So like, for example, I don't really need this. I don't really need this bow. Uh, what else do I not need? Uh, I can get rid of this. this. And because this is uh, blue red and green linked we can sell it and we'll get what's called a chromatic orb which can randomize the colors on an item so if we needed like a certain blue socket that can really help out for us but uh, as of right now we don't really need to use it next up uh, in terms of what we're going to go for you can get the extra spell damage we're actually going to go over here uh, instead because we can actually save a few skill points uh we, we lose out on some cast speed i actually do like the cast speed but we'll get an item that will grant us cast speed later down the line pretty soon so we can talk to these guys and uh they want us to clear the defeated pool but now this is the waypoint uh this is in town we click on the waypoint and we can go to the coast over here which is where we got the very first waypoint and we went down and got the medicine chest now we're going to be going uh actually we can go up let me go let me go check the vendors because as you level up the vendors will have different items and it's always good and i should uh at least show you guys that the vendors sometimes do have good stuff let me see if we can get what we're really looking really looking forward to getting is something that has uh specifically one blue one red and then like any other color can be totally fine if we happen to have it in like a wand or something that would be excellent we could maybe get this but i don't have the scrolls of wisdoms at the second but i'm just trying to show you guys that you can get that you can also type in nn for movement speed boots but there doesn't happen to be any unlucky it happens uh, but we can actually sell this armor Station. scrap Welcome. so if we sell we can also hold uh control and you can click on the item and you see we can just get our scrolls of wisdom so this is really good for getting scrolls of wisdom's armor scrap and then now we actually have some like money which is the scrolls of like identity essentially if you've ever played diablo same mechanic uh let's see if we can get a uh, triple uh, ideally we'd get something that adds damage to spells as well like so you can see this one over here but it's not in the correct colors okay we have two reds not too bad it's a staff so it is um i believe all staves are, staves are two-handed uh that one could be okay we could probably find something better but there's really nothing here that i really want uh, at the moment but definitely check out the uh, npcs as they can have some stuff um so yeah th there's the well. once we complete the quest it'll basically have some like dialogue but we'll skip on that now we're gonna go back to the coast 
And as we level up our zombie skill gem, we're going to get more and more zombies. So uh, we've got a, a quest over here. And we're going to be looking for specifically these little exclamation marks. That's basically where the quest is. And then also, I probably should have mentioned at the very beginning, but uh, in the bottom left, that's where our mana is uh, for our potions. Like number three is what I have bound to. If I hit one, two, uh, that's going to be the health potion. And the other ones will be like the mana potions because they're blue. Corresponds to the correct colors. But like, I, I feel like I should try to explain everything uh, as thorough as possible because, you know, sometimes people haven't played an action RPG before. Make sure you level up all your gems, though. There's no reason not to right now until we get to Vitality. That's like the first gem where we may not level it up uh, all the way um, in the very beginning. So I just keep on moving. These guys can hit you pretty hard because they'll, like, charge up. So just keep moving. You'll be okay. And, oh, I should explain how the mana uh, flasks and the life flasks refill. So how that refills is actually going to be done by just killing enemies. There are alternate ways to get flask chargers, but for the most part, that's, like, the, the basic way. So we're going to be grabbing uh, these little seashells. And once we get all... Ooh, nice, we got an armor scrap in the very beginning. Again, these are really good just to get um, scrolls of identity. Later, we can use them. Oh, nice. We got a, a coral ring, so that's going to grant us a decent amount of life. So we're going to go ahead and throw on that ring uh, that we just got. Well, I automatically equipped it. Now we can use this flask because we have the uh, uh, level requirement met. And we can also have summon phantasm support. We'll try to use this very, very soon. Uh, I'll show you what that does. But yeah, feel free to, again, you can use Freezing Pulse. Uh, I just like to get the zombies at the very beginning so we can start leveling them up. And let's just keep on going. Oh, you know what? We can actually identify that. So there's another area called Defeated Pool. We don't actually want to do that quest now. I'm only going to be highlighting the important quests. Um, and they'll be in the pinned comment for the timestamps as well. Because in Path of Exile, there are quests that you definitely want to do. And a bunch of the quests are optional. They'll give you some sort of reward that is almost irrelevant. Uh, for us. Um, the reason why I say that, it, it could be something like a uh, skill point reset, like you can respec. And you definitely don't want to mess up in the very beginning of Path of Exile, unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, let's just keep on going. So we see that other exclamation mark. And now if we pop that Quicksilver Flask, that one's the one that's green. And what the Quicksilver Flask does is it makes us move 40% faster, and that in the very beginning is huge. So we have our first item that we're actually going to identify. So we're going to right-click on the uh, Scroll of Wisdom, and then left-click on the item, and you'll see what it does. As soon as we kill the enemy. Okay, there we go. So if I mouse over it, you'll see what it does. It gets us extra energy shield. Energy shield is that blue thing above the health, and that just regenerates um, after not taking damage for a little bit. We're going to make sure we get three seashells, and we put them all in here. Now we go to the next area. I'm going to go back to town, sell some stuff, look for uh, new things to maybe purchase. And let's go back to the Lion Eyes Watch. And we can go to Tarkley. And we can get a new thing. So we can get Frost Bomb, Orbs of Storms, Raging Spirit. Um, I would recommend if you want to get Frost Bomb, that's great. You can also get Raging Spirit. They'll summon these little Flame Skulls. Frost Bomb is excellent as well. I, I really personally really like Frost Bomb, so we're going to pick that up. And then we can also get Frost Blink. So oh, well. we'll put Frost Blink can be anywhere. I'm going to put this on my W key. So I just click over here and put that over there. And I'm going to still use Fireball. Uh, Fireball is still like okay to use, but I can also look for other gems. So if you want to try out some other uh, like gems for uh, abilities, feel free to go ahead and check them out. I always recommend people to find the skill that you really like. Okay, so this one is uh, a wave of divine fire. Uh, what I really like uh, that we'll get very soon is actually this totem <clears throat> uh, called Holy Flame Totem. We're actually going to get this. And let me see if I have a blue. Okay. Uh, okay, normally I wouldn't recommend doing this, but I'm going to do it just because I'm going to hope I can get a red. So if I can actually, wait, this one has red in it. Let's use this. Now, you can see I cannot dual wield two weapons of different type. I'm going to lose out on the extra spell damage, which kind of sucks. But Holy Flame Totem is so excellent, and I need the extra blue socket color over here. We can also go to Nessa and go to Purchase Items and see if there's any support gems that work with our colors. If there are, that's awesome. Um, if not, it's no big deal. We don't really necessarily need to level up the volley now, but it's something that we will use later down the line. 
Uh, but ideally, if we can go to purchase items, if we can find something that has, this requires level six, and that's fine. Um, but I need a red uh, over here. This could be something that I might want to get, but let's see what the other guy has. Different vendors have different things. Welcome. All right, and it doesn't have to be a weapon. We can look for it somewhere else if need be. Ideally, I don't want to really want to replace my chest piece. So I'm just looking for a red and a blue that is linked. Oh, perfect, right here. There are some gloves here. We can purchase these. And then I can go back to using these for the extra bonus spell damage. All right, so now we are going to take this. We're going to put the Holy Flame Totem and the Arcane... Uh, oh, not Arcane Surge. We want the... Uh, where is it? Summon Phantasm Support. There we go. So we want these linked, and it's going to summon these little, like, minions. And now I'm going to go ahead and sell all these other items that, like, I don't really need. It's not going to really give us anything good, but, mm, heck, it's it, it's better than nothing. Uh, yeah, at this point, we really don't need Fireball anymore. I'm just going to sell it so we can just scroll Wisdom. We have another skill point. We're going to actually path over here. So the first few stats, again, the only one that really matters is that. Then we're going to get some extra damage. We're going to get extra minion damage. And uh, our build will get a lot stronger. So right now, I'm going to use the Holy Flame Totem and uh, well, I'm going to use Frost Bomb. Where did I put that? Let's see. We'll put Frost Bomb. Uh, I guess we could use Arcane Surge for that right now. All right. Actually, with Frost Blink, it would be better. The reason why is because I'm Frost Bomb has like a really long cooldown. The other one, I'm just going to be spamming. Okay. So let's go back to Submerged Patch and let's continue. So now we're using a completely new skill. But if you like Fireball, heck, use Fireball. But I highly recommend the Holy Flame Totem. It is so good. And now we also have Blink, so we can now move a lot faster. I'm going to put this on right click. So now our damage is actually really strong with uh, the Frost Bomb Holy Flame Totem. Holy Flame Totem costs a lot of mana, though. And we can only have one out at a time. But watch this thing just melt and shred content. I love it so much early on. Great, great skill. I'm going to kill this uh, Brood Princess over here. So you basically want to be stopping for like Elite or other packs of monsters that have like this little blue aura around them, you'll see. And we'll get rid of this. We can also hit J so we can empower the monsters, make them even stronger. Oh, this one resists cold over here though. Okay. Sometimes you run to maybe a situation where like some modifiers may be too difficult earlier on. This may be a case right now with the when we just modified the enemy, but some of the times the league mechanic, which is this is Sentinel League, um, the mechanic is literally too hard to do in the very beginning. Like your character's not supposed to really be able to do it, but we're gonna still try anyway. It doesn't mean we're not gonna uh, still attempt to do it. Summon some more zombies. This one might be a little bit too juiced up for most people to do. So again, if you run to the situation where the enemy seems a little bit too hard. It's okay. Path of Exile is not a very easy game. And also, this league mechanic is new. And a lot of times, the league mechanic earlier on to do it, like, you can't really do it. Like, you'll just die. But it's okay. We should be able to manage. Because it's supposed to make them harder. That's the, that's the point. It's a higher risk, higher reward, right? I mean, this thing is really tanky. But it's going to be dropping something extra good when we kill it. it. Looks like it has, like, an armor for its head, so it'll drop probably, like, a rare... Uh, we got a ring, and that's not bad earlier on. Uh, this is just a tooling. You can pick up some of the items uh, that need to be uh, identified, but I wouldn't really recommend identifying them. The reason why is because earlier on, you're better off using those scrolls of wisdom for other things, unless it has like the, the right colors or something like that that you really actually want. But now we're, you're getting these little phantasms, which is awesome. And we can actually identify that ring, which we'll do in just a second here. Oh, we got an amulet. Go ahead and pick this up. Get some more HP very, very soon. All right, we'll level up that gem as well. Oh, looks like we can get into a dead end. And also, right below our Quicksilver Flask. Um, let's grab this amulet. Actually, this is going to be a better amulet for us, because I'd rather have the mana regen versus life regen. But yeah, you want to definitely pick up any of the items that... Um, are going to require the sockets or anything that has like three you can pick up earlier on just because early you don't really have very much options as long as it's like a, like a three link yeah, you could consider picking it up but we're going to keep moving and we can actually use that ring as soon as we like get to the next area it's just because i don't want to open up my inventory while doing this i mean i could like it's not that but i want to show you guys the item <laughs> and i might 
actually, you know what? We can kind of do it here. So we can identify this. So we're going to replace the Iron Ring because we don't do any fizz damage right now. We're also not using like a regular attack. We're using a spell, which isn't going to include the bonus of like the extra damage to attacks because we're using a spell, not an attack. There are things that will modify spells and attacks, and there are things that will just modify spells or just attacks. And you have to read all of the things very specifically on Path of Exile. It's a complex game. So yeah. All right, uh, next up. Okay, so right before we exit this area, we can actually throw up a portal. Uh, and this is gonna be interesting for like a, it's almost like a speed run mechanic. I could have thrown it up a little bit earlier, but I didn't know exactly where it was gonna be. And let's go check out the other items that we got. So Frost Bomb, how it works is you throw it down and after a delay, it, it'll have like an explosion. The Flame Totem will probably clear out most of the things, but um, let's go ahead and identify this. Yellows I'll identify and I'll try to equip, but the rest of the stuff I'm just gonna sell unidentified so I can get extra little currency shards. And now we're gonna continue moving on. Just keep on using that Frost Blink. And just keep on going. And make sure you level up all your gems as we go along. And now we're coming up to another skill point. We're gonna go here now. We're gonna get extra minion damage. And then we're gonna get a thing where we're gonna get extra uh, minion. We're gonna grab all the scrolls of wisdoms. Make sure you use your mana flasks. And actually we're gonna equip this amulet instead because it gives us mana regen. So the other amulet, what it does grant us is life regen, which is still not a bad stat, but I'd rather have mana regen. I don't really have survivability issues. Um, most of the time, the only time we'll die earlier on is on bosses. It's because I'd rather scale for damage and speed uh, versus getting defensive stats because dying doesn't really matter if we're playing soft core up until way later in the game. Because earlier on, like, you gain so much XP, it doesn't really matter. There's not really a penalty for dying. Other than, yeah, you die, it sucks, you gotta restart. But what we're looking for is the waypoint. And once we get this waypoint, oh, speak of it. Right here. All right, so we get this waypoint. We're gonna actually go back to Lion Eye's Watch, okay? And then we're gonna take the, the portal that we use inside of the Submerged Passage uh, before we got to the ledge. The reason why we're going back this way is it's a little bit faster because inside the Submerged Passage, if you look at the mini-map, if I move my face out of the way, you can see that there's another little like hidden area. That area is actually gonna lead us to a quest. And the reason why we do it this way is it's because it's faster. It's probably like somewhere over here. But like it, the, the maps were random, so again, it, it, it could be a little bit different. And if you want to go to the same area and kill like monsters again, um, what you can do is you can hold the control and click on the area and you'll see that I can open up a new instance. Well, this one, I don't have an instance open up, but like if I wanted to, that is an option that's available. Also, there's like an, a, a global chat. I'm going to leave on the global chat just because sometimes people talk about funny stuff and like people have questions and sometimes I like to answer their questions via just talking to you guys. Um, but for the first part of our playthrough, and we'll, we'll do all the acts, I'll show you guys everything. Uh, but for this first part, I'm not streaming right now, but I will be streaming the whole thing. It's just the part one, I usually just do it off stream so I can upload as fast as possible. But these file sizes are very large as, you know, I'm showing you the guys the whole game. So we'll, we'll separate each act by one part. Nice, we got a transmutation. Oh, some phantom support. Sometimes you can pick up a gem that's a higher level or will have quality. Um, Quality, honestly, early on doesn't matter too much for most of the skills. Later on, it will matter towards like the, the end end game. Uh, but a lot of times earlier on, you get like plus like very low amount. Now, okay, this is a big note over here. Lord of the Dead. We have an extra number of raised skeletons and zombies that we can summon. So now we can get uh, another zombie. So now we'll have four instead of three. And later that number will increase as we level up our skill. Just gonna keep on going. Yeah, so just pretty much summon your Holy Flame Totem, move by, and if you get, like, body blocked by enemies, feel free to go ahead and just use your Frost Blink. This actually does damage as well. It's not very much damage. I came up to a dead end. That's unfortunate. But what we're looking for is a boss in here. But yeah, I like Holy Flame Totem because you literally throw it down and then all the enemies go towards it, and they just die instantly. So here is the Dweller of the Deep. This is the boss that we're looking for. So we're just going to eliminate him. They're pretty easy, but if you take a lot of cold damage, you can get frozen or chilled, which will slow down your uh, action speed. Yeah, getting frozen sucks, but like playing a minion build, honestly, it feels so good because 
you're able to. Um, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna log back to the character sc uh, selection screen. And we're gonna go back in just so we can save a portal. And we're gonna talk to Tarkley. He's gonna give us a reward. So we're gonna get a skill point. I can't accept it right now. If you can't accept it, because like my inventory's got too much clutter right now. I have four scrolls of wisdom. Do we have anything that would actually be good to identify? Uh, this is a scepter, which is different from a wand. So we can't really make great use out of it right now. So I'm just gonna pretty much sell everything. Uh, I always identify boots in the very beginning. Oh, we got movement speed, yes. Um, we can keep this iron ring and I'll show you what we'll do it later, with it later if we get an essence. Um, I, actually, I can just sell the Vix Coral Amulet. I don't really need it. So we got movement speed, but now you can see, no, my Frost Blink and Arcane Surge aren't leaving. It's okay, just move it somewhere else. It's a, it's a game of inventory Tetris for a little bit when you're playing this game, uh, and especially earlier on. I don't need to summon Phantasm support. We're selling all the armor scraps in the very beginning. Later we'll use them, but like now getting uh, yes. like it gives us up to 20% of like the stats on the item. The stats are so bad in the item that it doesn't really matter. Anyways, so we can look for uh, sp specifically cold resistance rings can be great. Uh, that's going to cost three scrolls of wisdom. I'm going to replace the coral ring or what does this one do? Uh, let's see. Regen life, energy shield. It's really like man. The life is probably going to be better, but I really like the mana. Um, but you definitely want to get uh, some sapphire rings, and we'll see if I can modify one of these, and I'll show you guys what we do with it later. Um, let's see if we have any like triple links. Uh, we can also pick up a uh, chain belt. Let's see, we got 18 to maximum energy shield. We'll pick up that as well. And if you want to, let me actually show you this. So I can take three of these. I can put three of these in. Oh wait, these are all, all, all the same. Okay. Uh, Okay, if there's three of the same, you can put them in to get an upgrade, but this one was a mana flask. Uh, we'll save this just because if we get one more of this mana flask, I can upgrade it to get a medium one. So there's a lot of like weird vendor recipes, but anyways, I didn't have enough room to accept the quest reward, so I just click on the, the NPC Tarkley, and this is the Dweller reward. That's like that boss we just killed. Now we get an extra skill point. And now what we're going to be doing, we can pass down over here. We can get some life. Uh, we can get life over here. It doesn't really matter which one we go for first, but I'm going to go down this way, and we're going to go ahead and accept this. Um, we can also check out Nessus. Yes. The NPCs will have, uh, you know, again, newer items as time progresses. We can actually get some uh, other skills if we want to. You can see that there's a holy relic over here that grants some life regen. Uh, I think we can get vitality pretty soon too, uh, which will be really awesome. But check check these out. If there's a skill that you're like, oh, that sounds really cool, I wanna try it. Remember, don't look at the support gems uh, because support gems will be supporting. If you want a new skill, that's going to be just the actual skill gem. You can run whatever you want, but uh, for the sake of this, uh, we can get skellies pretty soon. Uh, yes, we don't have skellies yet. Skellies will be coming soon. I actually really like getting skeletons earlier on because they're really cheap. Uh, if you wanna get to that, where's the holy relic? I guess we can get that just for funsies to have room for it. Be if right. not, we'll make room. All right, throw it in here. No problem at all. And we can throw it. Uh, let's, let's put a relic. So it stays near you when you hit an enemy with an attack. It triggers a Nova spell. Uh, we don't really use a normal attack, but I will do it for the sake of doing it. Um, there is a build that you can run uh, with a Holy Relic. But we're going to go back to the ledge, and we will continue. So I can summon this little Holy Relic, and uh, it does things. When we attack, you can see it, it does a sort of like wave. It's cool looking, but uh, it is really not going to be too much of a use for us. For the most part, because like I'm just gonna be rolling around, just throwing down the totem and moving, and then frost bomb as well. So let's go ahead and go fast. You see that that thing pops after a while. Get the scroll of wisdom. Nice. So we'll get we'll get flame dash pretty soon as well. So this guy over here. He's like our first like boss that you actually see some mechanics where you're actually gonna wanna try to dodge that. Because you see, he hits very hard and he does what's called a shock on you, which will make you take increased damage. See those little like blue rings? Don't stand on top of them. It makes you take damage. I don't think I really wanna empower this boss. But yeah, we could, could use some more of these little stalker things. This is the Sentinel leap mechanic. This guy unfortunately will kill our uh, guys really fast. If I like do an attack over here, you can see a little like holy relic. But try out new things. I always recommend people to mess around with the game, find some new stuff. Send right here so we don't get hit by it. All right. So now we got a large life flask. Uh, oh, this one is 20 energy shield, more than 18. So we'll throw that on. And click on all the little chests in the very beginning too. It's definitely worth it. Let's go ahead and empower uh, these enemies over here. The sentinel will empower the enemies, and hopefully they'll drop better loot. Uh, 
sauce bomb. We can maybe do some autos. Oh, there's that red, green, blue I was talking about where they're all linked. And if you want the items to go away or stay up on the screen, uh, the default key should be Z as in zebra. And that way you can see all the items just in case yours wasn't showing up. Okay, that 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 will be pretty nice. This is what we're going to actually use for our armor. Uh, I got exactly what I wanted, which is two blues and one red. So keep on the lookout for that. It doesn't have to be the chest piece. Um, it's going to be what we use Absolution in because Absolution is a red gem. And we are going to want to uh, put that in. And our gems are all about to level up, which is awesome. We got another coral ring. I pick up early on some rings um, that are white. And if I get to the point where I can show you the essences, because uh, it's random, like if these happen, like these monsters that will drop an item that can make a white item uh, into a rare item. All right, let's keep on going. So now we're at the climb, so the ledge to the climb. This frost wall, it's another skill. Let's pick it up. Uh, I, I, I usually just pick up gems just so I can sell them, just so we can get some stuff earlier on. <clears throat> but let's just throw up that sentinel again. So the sentinel will make the fights a lot more difficult, just as a heads up. But I want the challenge. I don't know if the, the rewards are really worth it right now, though. Like, we got, like, one yellow. Again, a lot of times with League Mechanics, people skip out on them earlier on. But I'm at least going to show you how they work. Um, there's really nothing to mention otherwise, other than it makes the, the fights a little bit harder. But they should be dropping better rewards. Some of my zombies again. Right, there we go. He dropped a Sapphire Ring. Oh, that's actually good. Uh, you definitely want to pick up some sapphire rings for the boss fight. In fact, now we have two of sapphire rings uh, that will be coming up before we end Act 1. Alright, there we go. And also Frost Blink, what's cool with it is like, if I want to go from like this high ground to the low ground or vice versa, it does let me do that. And we have another skill point, so we can put that in. I can, I can go for more minion damage. Because I want as much damage as possible because we're going to get skeletons pretty soon. I like using skeletons earlier on. It's kind of just up to your preference. But it just makes your survivability like super easy because like you have these giant amounts of armies that just absorb all your damage should summon another zombie. But right now like we still have to keep on summoning our guys again and again. Uh, later we will not have to do that anymore uh, for the most part. Like our, our zombies will not be requiring to be resummoned because they're just simply not going to die. Right now though they do die. They, they die quite often. Throw down the totem and just keep moving. Okay, this guy will be a little bit more of a challenge here. I recommend if you have the sentinel for like the sentinel mechanic, uh, or if you have the uh, sentinel for the new mechanic, um, don't use it on some of these like bosses because they're probably going to be very difficult. I mean, you guys saw how long that other fight took, right? And we got a new Great medium light class. This one has to be uh, identified. Now, you cannot use I unidentified items in this. I think Diablo 1 was the only one that let you do it. It gives us immunity to corrupt blood. That's actually really good <laughs> earlier on. Surprisingly, the, the corrupting blood shows up really early in the game. So corrupting blood is like a, a negative effect where you just start draining life. Uh, or like it, if you are bleeding, um, you also can actually lose out pretty hard to that. I'd rather... Burn and call okay, such a place home. so now we're at the lower prison over here, and I have some like notes, and I want to mention something that's pretty important. Um, so for any of the important quests, I will leave them down below. Like the, the quest in Act 1 are going to be, I have them like on the side just so I don't forget to go ahead and mention them. Um, the important quests on Act 1 are going to be the Dweller in the Deep, which is that like boss that we went back for, the like crab looking thing, and also the Maroon Mariner. And there, there will be these things called Trial of Ascendancies, which we will also do. Again, throw that on totem. Ooh, this guy could be kind of... This guy looks like he's kind of tough. I'm going to empower him, make him even more difficult, just to see if he drops something good. Let's see. He's a gargantuan, okay. Let's see if he drops anything good. 
What is it? Oh, these are three blue. So we can see if the, that's like gonna be any good for maybe our zombies or something. That'd be nice. So now we are coming up to the trial of ascendancy. And so what these are, and uh, I will also let me go ahead and summon another zombie real quick while everything's going. The thing that I like with minions is like I can like all tab out. Uh, so these are what's called uh, uh, trials. Uh, so these are uh, called trial of ascendancies. There's tons of them. So the first uh, one is going to be in the lower prison. Uh, or it's the prison act one, the lower level. So that's what we're doing right now. And what it is, it's almost like a little maze. So we're gonna click on that to get started. We'll click on the trial of ascendancy. And you'll see that there's these spikes. Go as soon as the spikes like start recessing. And all you gotta do is you pop a quicksilver flask, hit this lever, and you're gonna walk back. But on the time that you're gonna be walking back, wait for it to go by. And you'll see that there's these little like uh, nodes or little like areas where you can hide for a second. If you want to, you can wait the whole thing, but I'm just gonna go and go forward. You can see how much damage it does. If you do get hit by it, it's a massive amount of damage. A lot of times earlier on too, since you have no regen, it can be quite deadly. So these ones are gonna be in a checkerboard pattern. So basically it's gonna like not be right here where it just was, but you can just frost blink up at the top and then you're good to go on that. Easy, easy. I'll kill this guy. And he will be dead very soon. There we go. And he's dead. And we're, we're going to go click on the Trial of Ascendancy plaque. We got to get a bunch of these. And then that's how we get our, like, subclass or our uber class. It's called an Ascendancy in the game. But uh, it's where we become a lot stronger. Oh, we're getting lots of these Sapphire rings earlier on. This is really good. Um, we probably won't get enough essences to roll a bunch of them. But you definitely want to pick up Sapphire rings. So yeah, you want to make sure you do that in the lower prison. And that's the only one you need to do for this one. But there will be some acts where you got to do more. So now we're in the upper prison. And we're just going to keep going. We'll get Flame Dash pretty soon and our Absolution pretty soon as well. I'm just going to activate this thing to empower the monsters. Oh, so now we're bleeding. One thing, like, you'll see that that's that little icon. When you bleed, don't move. You'll take more damage. Oh, this one's going to drop some sort of, like, yellow. Okay. Um, as far as, like, doing this earlier on, like, I'm going to identify this belt. Uh, okay. It's, like, usable. How much? I, I know. It gives us eight less um, energy shield, though. Oh, is there a new sentinel thing over here? Oh, cool, a sentinel cache. Yeah, we have like another sentinel that we can activate, I guess. So, gotta throw this one. Oh, we only have one. Oh, this is the same one. It's just these, I guess, can be modified. Oh, this one has two out of eight uses. This one has 10 out of 10, okay. Might as well finish up the other one so it doesn't clog up our inventory. I wish they made this sentinels a little smaller. But every single PU Wheat League, there's always some new thing that clogs up your inventory. Usually in a good way though, cause like, you know, you wanna engage with the mechanic, but at the same time, it just, it clogs up your inventory. So how it works is in each new area, I believe the Sentinel resets, like you're allowed to activate it again. These are called strong boxes. Um, they, they summon a bunch of monsters and they drop stuff, uh, actually. Do I have room for that? Okay, cool. And you just kill all the monsters and then you get the reward from the, the chest after. This one didn't really have that much rewards, but you can get... Um, different rewards if you modify them. And we'll get into that in a moment. Once once it's actually worth it, because it's not really worth it now until way later. <laughs> but you can get stuff on uh, another tree later, which I'll show you, that will actually have, oh, there's a jade amulet. That's actually not too bad to pick up, because we will actually want dexterity and strength, because we're gonna have lots of intelligence on our character. All right, so next up we got two more skill points. We're gonna put them into here, so we get enduring bond. So we'll get some more minion damage. because we're going to be doing Absolution very soon. At level 12, we can use Absolution, which is an excellent, excellent skill. It's one of the skills where we can actually use it for the entire way we play the game. Um, if you like it, stick with it. I mean, I'm going to be sticking with it for a really long time, but it is one of the best minion skills in the entire game. Zombies used to be good, but they, they've nerfed it. It used to be like you could summon like 12, 13 uh, zombies, but they've heavily nerfed the amount that you can get as well as zombies damage. But this guy's uh, he's got a hook, so... 
he might he might scare you the first time you you go up to him because he comes out and does that just keep moving because you're playing minions you have a huge advantage so make sure you cast frost bomb then you can use your auto if you want to but after we kill this guy we're going to be getting a waypoint and we're going to get some extra skills to mess around with which would be awesome but yeah he is a little tough though yeah, having a another skill wouldn't be that bad either at this point. I think I got another skill. We just didn't equip it, but this guy just takes some time to kill. But he'll go down eventually. It just takes some time. And unfortunately, there's no corpses, so we can't summon zombies. But... Later, with skeletons, we don't require a corpse. We can actually use an ability that grants us uh, corpses, but there we go. He, oh, he dropped a large life flask. Okay, so now we go to the Warden's Chambers. We go, now there's uh, there's some like lore and stuff if you want to click on it. There are things in some boss fights that you do want to click on, and I'll, I'll mention the important ones. But now we're gonna go back to town, uh, get our reward. And on top of that, we will also get some new stuff to mess around with. So uh, we actually need to clean up the inventory first as well. So we get a new skill. So we get minion damage support. That's what we want, the minion damage. Um, so we're gonna the minion damage. Uh, let's go sell a bunch of these items that I don't actually need. So I do want to keep this. Um, this is uh, 17. I mean, this one is probably gonna be better. The reason why I was thinking about keeping this is just because I can roll it, but it's fine. I, we're probably gonna get something else later very soon anyways. This one has no movement speed, so I don't really want it. I was just hoping if it had movement speed, I'd think about it. This is a, a wand. Uh, it's probably not gonna have anything good, but you know what, for the sake of it, let's see what it has. Eh, physical damage is not gonna be too helpful for us. Let's get rid of that, because I'm gonna be using these rings. Uh, I'm gonna keep the one that has the highest amount, but it's the highest. Uh, that one we can actually identify just in case it rolled good. Let's see. We get fire and lightning resistance. And 11 dex is kind of nice, but nothing to be too crazy about. Let's see. We got max energy shield dex. Um, this is 20 cold rest. It's kind of low. Uh, already have... Uh, I, I can keep the other one for the corrupted blood. It's not that bad. So we'll keep that. We only need two of the sapphire rings. The reason why I want to keep the white ones is because uh, we may want to use... Um, uh, a modifier on it. Uh, this will keep, just in case we have some stat requirements to meet. Uh, I guess we picked up the frost while we didn't really use it though. And then we can also get rid of, let's see, we have three mana? Uh, life blast, life blast, okay. Let's just get rid of these. I don't really need to save three of these to upgrade because I already have like the upgrade. Anyways, but you can do that as well. Uh, and then always, again, check back the uh, vendors just in case they have something like better. Um, there can be certain things that you may see that you're like, oh, I really want that. Hey, go for it. Uh, but let's go look for um, any new skills that we may want to mess around with. So I really like having Vitality. I'm going to pick up this one. As well as Clarity. Clarity gives us mana regen, but it's going to reserve mana. And I'll explain that uh, when I can. But there's also Summon Skeletons. It's excellent. Uh, but we can get that as a quest reward very, very soon. We can also get Flame Dash very soon as well. Uh, let's see. So we have, so there's our Summon Skeletons. So we can get Flame Dash. I really want the Skeletons now. Stay sharp, um, but I wanted to get clarity and vitality to show you guys. So summon skeletons. This is how we're going to link our skeletons. So we're going to do summon skeletons. We definitely want to keep frost blink. Um, I can swap out. I want to keep zombie. I want to keep that as well. I don't really need holy relic at all. So I want that. And instead of arcane surge, I want to run uh, the minion damage support. So we can start leveling that up. We're going to actually swap out our chest piece very soon. But for now, we're going to throw vitality and clarity in here. And we're going to go right back over. Oh, it's lagging. Okay. And if your game seems to have like a desync or something that happens again in the earlier stages. So now uh, if I hold control, I can have like a, a whole another bar of skills. Um, I don't actually have to have it on my bar to use the skill. So if I activate both of these, I'm going to get uh, mana and life regen. But you see it reduces my maximum amount of mana that I'm allowed to have. But it's worth it in my opinion. And now we can summon our skeletons. Skeletons are very frail uh, minions. However... Uh, you don't need a corpse to summon them, so that's like the nice bonus, at least with them. Later down the line, though, we will get, um, a way so they just don't die instantly. But right now, they, the minions are still going to be dying instantly, unfortunately. 
because we need them to have enough regen. So this is one area where uh, you may want to not level up these gems, that specifically the Vitality and Clarity, because they're just going to cost too much, especially with Absolution coming up. I just like to have them like level 1, at least, just so it makes it a little bit easier. Now you can see the game is kind of changing up, like I'm not even really getting hit, which is awesome. Like all I need to do is basically walk around, oh I need Frost Blink. Oh, did I take a Frost Blink? Where is it? I just had to find a spot for it. Uh, Frost Blink. Oh, it, it's on R. Okay. So let me swap that out. And can swap this. I like to put skeletons on my right click. So I, what I do is I throw down my uh, totem, and then I summon some uh, skeletons, and I just kind of move on. So we're looking for the exit over here. And we're almost level 12. Level 12 is where we're gonna get our super awesome skill. All right, let's kill this guy. So again, stay for the, the, um, the yellow packs. Large mana flask, awesome. Be a nice little upgrade for us. Swap that in and out. And let's keep on moving. When I'm ready and not there's a three green link, but I don't really have too much use for that. And see if this guy... Oh, dropped a topaz ring. In Act 3, Lightning Resistance will be something that we kind of look out for. But as you can see, uh, once we get Vitality and Clarity leveled up, the next level up, I probably won't put points into it. So the next thing I want to do is I can get some extra uh, mana regen, because I like to have mana regen ASAP. Oh, another thing. Uh, I, I had the buffs turned off, but like over on the top left, you'll see that the buffs are active via them spinning. And you'll also see the little aura around you. You see a little like blue swirl and the um, red swirl. And that indicates that, uh, yeah, we have a buff. We got a large life blast. Nice. We're just looking for the ship's graveyard. So throw down the totem, and if there's a blue pack, you can feel free to stay and kill it. But once we get Absolution, our damage will be just really awesome. And we're just gonna keep on moving. And open up any of the chests that you see. That one unfortunately didn't drop anything that we wanted. I have a loot filter on right now, so some items just, they don't even show up. And I like it that way. So now that we got this waypoint, Fair Graves is usually uh, to like, it's pretty close to the waypoint, usually a little bit to the right. There's a yellow over here. And he's uh, one of the guys that we're going to have to talk to for a quest. Ooh, that guy hit really hard. You see my HP just dipped on that one. That's okay. We're about to get more HP anyways. And the summoner builds are always super tanky. And so what we're going to do right now, since we are level 12, is I'm going to rush to get to the uh, next um, game state for the next part of the quest. So let's see if we can get to it. So this is where we need, we do need to go over to the ship graveyard, but we're not gonna do that right now. What we're gonna look for is specifically getting to the next um, zone. And what it allows us to do is start a game state uh, where we can get a new skill, which is going to be um, Absolution. So this is where we now can go back. So we have this quest state now kind of activated. Now we go to Nessa and hopefully we can buy it. Let's hopefully have a transmute. So now we get a reward. We can get uh, Blade Salvo, R, Flesh Offering, Essence Strain. Uh, what would I suggest getting? Um, you can get, uh, what is it? Flesh Offering can be like useful. What it does is it consumes a corpse and then it gives your minions a little bit of a buff. Um, feel free to grab that if you want. It's, it's really no big deal, but I really want Absolution over here. So I'm going to pick up Absolution. If you don't have it, just keep on selling some items and hopefully you'll have enough to get it. But if not, feel free to go ahead and uh, continue playing with what you got. Um, so we have, uh, do we have a, I want at least a blue. So we have, uh, this one's, okay, we can try to hit it. Let, let's, let's use this just so I can show it off. So this item over here, um, because it's evasion, and energy shield like evasion is going to have a higher chance for all greens energy shields higher chance for blues and then armor is going to be higher chance for reds this will have highest chance for more uh blues so i'm going to try to hit hopefully it'll go double blues uh and one red okay it was all blue 
unlucky, it happens, no big deal. So we're gonna throw an absolution over here. Actually, I mean, if I'm only using two, I might as well just keep this armor. All right, so we're gonna actually keep this armor. I'm gonna try to move those elsewhere. So uh, we wanna use uh, minion damage with our absolution. If I happen to have a three, you know what, we can see if one of these vendors has one. It's not, let's not give up on it yet. You never know. So we're looking for, uh, there's two reds. Uh, but we already have that. We would want two blue, if possible. If not, we can get, we can use, technically we can use this one. Um, I don't see it. Let's go check oh, out wow. uh, Anessa. Maybe she'll have it. Yes. And there's three blues. Okay. So neither one of them had it. Well, we it's okay. Uh, what we're going to do is actually, if we can, let's see if we can go to mm -hmm. added. Let's type in added and we can get... The nice with, thing with the added damage support, like any of these, um, okay, well, I need another transmute. I don't really have enough for a transmute at this moment. Like, even if I, let's see, we can sell this and this, this stuff, stuff, but it's not blue items, so it won't really give us that. Uh, you can sell this and get five transmutation shards. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. It's, it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Because I'd rather get this right now, so we can get more damage. Um, so we'll throw in Absolution, we'll throw in the extra minion damage, and then now we're going to get, um, where is it? Uh, let's see, Wait, or we can just type in support if you want to see all the support gems that would work. And if you highlight over them, it'll say specifically what works and what doesn't. Actually, do we have, there's no red support gems earlier on. All right, <clears throat> that's uh, unlucky. All right, we'll, we'll keep this, uh, actually we don't really need to keep this at this point um, because we, we have to have red. I mean, I, I could get some more of those chromatics and maybe luckily I can hit one, but it's fine. I'll just pick up the items as we go along. And we definitely want to put vitality and um, clarity in something. So now, uh, what do I want to swap out? I definitely want to keep Frostblink. Uh, I, mean, I kind of like the Holy Flame Totem, to be honest. Ah, uh, we have nothing else. Let's see. Oh, wait, we have a, a red here and a blue here. Oh, wait, yeah, we're fine. Okay, we're good. And if you move around your gem sometimes, sometimes you might have to recast your buffs. So now that we have gone back, instead of going, because we went from Mervel's Caverns back to town, we're going to go back to the ship graveyard and then go into the area that we're supposed to go to. So we'll have to reactivate our buffs. And we can see the buffs are activated via this. So now we have Absolution. So I could still use Holy Flame Totem. I'm just going to move it on to this. And then Absolution is going to be our main skill. And we just go. And what Absolution is, it's a spell that also, when we kill something... Oh, that guy just decided to go way far away. Okay. So when we kill something, you will see that we get these, like, minions that also do the same thing. And they're really good. Because they're ranged, and they just, they just have, like, way better reaction than, like... The zombies are really, really slow and outdated for the most part. But now we don't really need to use the Holy Flame Totem, unless it's on a, a boss. I like using Holy Flame Totem for a while. But pretty much, once you get Absolution, eh, Absolution will do most of the work for you. And then hopefully very soon we will be getting um, at least an Orb of Alchemy so we can get two items that will significantly increase our uh, cast speed, which is essentially going to increase our damage. Okay, there we go. Nice. Now our build is really, really feeling good. I'm just going to put this on R. This is closer to me to hit. So what we're looking for is a uh, a girl's body in here, and she drops an item that we want. We pick up this creator mana flask because it's 120, and that's more than 70. So let's swap these in and out. Keep on going. We're gonna want to still level everything up. We're gonna get this extra HP and mana regen. Oh, look at this guy. He's a gargantuan. Okay. I kind of want to empower him. I don't know. Can we get him weak and then have him empower? Oh, oh, you, you can't snapshot. Okay. So just as heads up, in case anyone wanted to do what I thought what you could do is get the, get the enemy really low and then spam the sentinel. And then you'd get like, you know, you kill the sentinel when it's like almost dead anyways. But that's, that's not how it works. It, it doesn't let you do that, unfortunately. But I understand why. It, it'd be too good. And he only dropped a scroll of wisdom. Yeah, I would say for the difficulty, they're not really dropping anything good. And that's why I mentioned before, a lot of people will skip out on the League's mechanic early on because it simply doesn't drop things. Except for in like Ultimatum. Ultimatum was always worth doing. 
Like, early on, you can get some Alks, and that was really big. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the ship graveyard. We can actually log out. It's going to be faster if we log out. But alternatively, yeah, you can walk back there. And it's an option. But I'm trying to show you guys how to be, like, really efficient with the game. So now we go back to the ship graveyard. And the first act is actually one of the longest ones because I stopped to explain a lot more. But later on, the acts will be much shorter. So kill him because he's yellow. Kill all the yellow and blues. And usually to the right is where Fairgraves is from the waypoint. I mean, again, your mileage may vary because it's random. Actually, you know what? He's probably going to be down here. Like, I think you can go maybe both ways, but yeah, it is this way. And it's just after playing Path of Exile for so long, you start memorizing some of the patterns here. So throw down the totem. We can even throw down the frost bomb because he takes like a second for him to do anything. So right now, we have uh, Vitality, can't be leveled up because I don't have the Strength requirement, but I don't want to level these up, so I'm going to right-click on them. And so what right-clicking on them does is it makes it so you cannot level it up anymore um, via just right there. Let's see, is there any uh, correct links? Okay. So we can log out or we can just walk. At this point, I'm just going to walk. But you can see over here, if I want to level them up, I can click on them over here. But I don't want to level them up anymore. I'm, I'm good for, for now. Um, just because I want to not reserve too much mana because I want to cast my skills, right? If you want to, I believe you can go back to town and get some sort of reward. If you if you want to, it's it's fine. You could actually just progress and there get it later, but it is a skill point, so that's nice. Lots of skill points is always good. And just more uh, increased maximum life, more mana, and then we'll get a uh, new uh, mechanic to show off very, very soon. So yeah, let's just keep on going. We're gonna be coming up. This is basically the end of this act. And this is where you want to. Oh, also, if you open up any of the treasure chests here, they'll summon a bunch of like monsters. Ooh, there's a two blue and a red. This is exactly what we want. Now, I, well, actually, I, I have a transmute. Perfect. All right, let's just log back out. And this way I can save a town portal. And I wanna show you guys what I actually wanted to get. Uh, this will also increase our damage. Certain things may only, like, obviously the minion damage support only supports minion damage. But if I get the added lightning support, the added lightning support will add that to, um, right, I do want to keep raised zombies somewhere. Okay, we'll, we'll figure that out in a second. Vitality, we obviously want this as well. All right, so we're gonna put that shield on and let's see if we can get uh, another wand that will have uh, what we want. So we basically, they don't need to be linked, but I need the correct colors. Um, this one would be, Except, what does this one do? Oh, this is plus the fire. Oh, mana on kill is actually kind of nice. That's actually a nice feature. Let's see what else they have. It, it doesn't have to be really a wand. Welcome. But like, it plus spell damage is like not that bad. Some items will be two-handed, and the two-handed ones can have uh, six sockets. Uh, but not, not right now. Like getting a six socket right now, it, technically yes, you can get you can get it, but realistically, it's not really doable. Um, and so at this point, yeah, let's go ahead Farewell. and just purchase that one because there wasn't anything there that I wanted. But I did need to throw on uh, Vitality somewhere, so we'll get... Uh, oh, this one requires a transmit. We don't have that, so that's fine. We'll pick up this one, and this one will allow us to do the Skeletons, Clarity, and Vitality. And now I just need a spot for our Zombie. So we're going to move our Absolution. Oh, actually, I didn't even really need to get that. It was fine, though. We got it, because we can put it in here. And now we're all good to go. Now, if I wanted to, if I had two Blue Links, I could get, like, Zombies plus Minion damage. Um, I don't really need Frost Bomb, actually, right now. Let me go ahead and sell this. This is actually kind of nice. I'm going to throw it in the Guild Stash, just in case anyone wants it. Uh, I won't use anything out of the Guild Stash for the entire playthrough, but, uh, you know, there's going to be some items that are just nice for leveling that we, we just try to share with each other. Um, so you can play this game with people. I probably should have mentioned that a long time ago. Like, But I'm, I'm obviously going to do this playthrough solo, so um, it'll be more relatable. Because sometimes people don't want to play with players. And, like, if you know what you're doing, you can go pretty fast. But... Um, you can play with players as well, but you will have to fight over loot, which is not always the nicest thing. <clears throat> I wish people got instance loot. Like, if you've ever played Diablo 3, um, it's not like Diablo 3, where everyone gets their own loot. It's like Diablo 2, where, um, yeah, you gotta, you gotta fight over the loot. Which, I hope one day they decide to change. You can make it so, like, people, like, whatever drops, it, it kind of randomizes who gets it, but, like, you take turns. But sometimes some person might not need an item and you need it, but they just don't pick it up. 
So now with this added lightning damage support, we're gonna hit for more lightning damage, which is good. Let me see if, okay, let's pick up that because it's a red, blue, green. But let's see if, if I can show you the effect of this shock. So if we shock the enemy, you'll see a little icon. It looks like there's lightning like around the little like uh, body. And that just means that they're just gonna take more damage. Open all the chests that you see, just in case anything good drops. Oh, the Sentinel is, this one's dead, right? Do I have to identify? Oh, I have to identify this one. Quantity of items, we'll try it. I mean, this might be actually pretty hard. Let's let's see. Let's pop this. So I think this how this one works. I'm, I'm trying to see how all of them work. This one tags 29 enemies, I believe, is the mechanic. And they're all gonna be different. I think one of them hits in an AOE, one of them just targets them. Ooh. Got some gloves, although... I can move this uh, Holy Flame to them. Oh wait, no, we have some Phantasms on it. I like that support shield. <laughs> it's just more like, more minion fodder. And like, even if the minion dies in like one or two hits, it's actually really nice. Um, for certain boss mechanics, because there are bosses... It's more so Izaro when we come come to him, I'll, I'll mention it, but like, there are some bosses that have mechanics that will pretty much one-shot you. And if it one-shots the minion, it doesn't matter how much HP the minion has. It just has to exist. Okay, so now we're coming up to the Cavern of Anger over here. And we're almost at the final boss for this act. And once we get to it, we will. I'm sorry I didn't get to show you guys essences, but it's it's rant. A lot of the things in Path of Exile are 100% going to be random. So yeah, there's treasure chests will. Okay, so uh, there's the, uh, like I said, okay, there's the cold exposure. And there's there's the, there's shock right there. I don't know if you guys saw it fast enough. Ooh. There's uh, two blue red. Ooh, got another. So I don't know how this works. Like, I thought we can get three of them. Maybe we have to open up this and like, oh, these are all bronze. Rusted, okay. So, there's like several different ones. Uh, let's identify this one. Can I put this one? Oh, so I think it goes red. Um, it's fine. I don't really care about that one. It's not like modified at all. Uh, but I think you can take like dead ones and you can like forge them into something. I don't know if the mechanic is available yet. But we have another skill point. And okay. So now... Let's get rid of that. So now if I want to, I can make it so Vitality has... Uh, 100% mana reservation efficiency. What that means is instead of vitality, like right now it absorbs 28 mana. It makes it so that is cut in half. That's a pretty good effect too. If you want to, you can get that. Um, uh, or we can get 10% increased life or we can get 50 to life. 50 to life is huge in the very beginning. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that and then we're gonna hit accept. That's a big chunk of HP. All right, so let's go continue now. When I'm ready and not before. But I like getting the life regen really early on too. Like I'm gonna eventually get the other one. There's gonna be some more life nodes. Like we can go up here and grab this life node and then get that uh, vitality reservation efficiency. And then we could start leveling up vitality a lot more. But right now I don't have the strength to even do that anyway. So it doesn't even matter. But yeah, we're coming to the boss. You can throw a portal down right before the boss. Cause that way if you die, you can respawn over there. And you can resummon our pets and stuff. Our minions. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, we throw up all of our stuff, throw our skeletons. Uh, this boss fight, uh, usually you actually want to stand like right next to her because those ice spears hurt. However, since we're playing a summoner and since I'm playing skeletons, I can sit farther back and just basically not take any damage. Like, oh, I, I forgot. You should probably equip those rings that I said that are good. I mean, I I'll be fine no matter what on this boss. Like, there's, there's no way we die. This is actually one of the hardest bosses in the game, surprisingly. Um, and the reason why it's one of the hardest bosses, there's like three or four bosses that are like, that are pretty early on, that are really tough. Um, but like once your gear's good enough, you will roll content. This build is absolutely amazing. And it is dead. But what I should have recommended is, you know those sapphire rings that we got? Equip them. The reason why is she hits cold damage and that's cold resistance. Uh, make sure maybe you can pick that up. Let's see what else is there. Uh, I can't really replace that. 
I'm not gonna really pick up the yellows at this point, but like if we can get any, we have one transmute, okay. We have one alteration and we will briefly dip into buying things in our next part of our playthrough. So we're gonna go ahead and just kill the enemies. Look at all, look at all these things right about to level up. Now you'll notice absolution can't be leveled up because we need strength. Uh, you see where it says 25 strength. We have, if you hit C as in cat, um, we have a lot of intelligence, but strength and dexterity will be suffering for a while. Later, we, we'll fix everything, but like early on, uh, most of the classes that are spawning in like the top, like the witch, the templar, the templar can get a little bit more strength, but not that much dexterity. But you'll fix it on gear later on, don't worry about it. But we definitely want to make sure that we get some strength. And there are some nodes that we can use to get the strength very, very soon. And now we're coming up to the forest encampment, which is going to be part of the next act. So we've already completed act one. There are a total of 10 acts. And then there's the end game, which is way longer than the entire campaign. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the first part of our playthrough. Let me know if you guys have any questions, but there's so much more to actually learn. We'll get into uh, buying and selling stuff briefly. Um, even though you might not have some of this currency, like most people will have about what I have. Like I didn't get anything super good at all, but I'll see if we can buy anything just so I can show you guys the mechanic of buying. We showed off the new Sentinel mechanic let me know what you guys think if you guys have played this game before uh, of the league mechanic. So far, I would say it's kind of meh. I don't really like managing that, like, I have to push the button um, and then actually, you know, uh, check the charges. I wish, like, we always had one and would just refill and we can modify it on our own versus, like, we got to pick one up. And, like, look at how many of these I have. Like, uh, I just feel like these should have been, like, a one square inventory versus, like, oh, also... And I should probably mention this is your stash. It's in the it's in every single town. You might not have the same amount of space that I have, and that's because I purchased it. The game is not pay to win at all, but there are storage things that you can like. You know, obviously, putting stuff in the storage helps. Like it's more inventory space. Does it really matter? Not really. Like it'll give you you as a new player. Don't feel like you have to spend money at all to get more inventory space um, at all. Like it, it's totally totally playable without it but um, it does make it a little bit nicer. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and end it off for part one of our Path of Exile Sentinel playthrough, but thanks for tuning in. If you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. If you're new here and do wanna see part two, I'll be uploading that very soon. I'm gonna be uploading lots of Path of Exile content in the next upcoming days, but thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in part two for act two. Take care and I'm out. Peace.